Doctoratus in Literus is to be presented to Mary O'Hara and the citation will be read now by Professor Therese Smith. Mary O'Hara. <clears throat> Deputy President, colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to be here in the company of such distinguished musicians, particularly at the end of Shachtan Gaiga and the St. Patrick's Day Festival. It is with great pleasure that I present to you the distinguished singer and harper, Mary O'Hara. Arguably the most influential singer harpist of the 20th century, Mary O'Hara brought the harp to worldwide audiences playing concerts to full capacity audiences at the Royal Festival Hall, in New York City at Carnegie Hall, and in London at the Royal Albert Hall. As a solo singer with harp, singing songs in Irish, Mary O'Hara was a unique artist, showcasing traditional music at a time when Ireland was experiencing a recession akin only to that which we are now facing. <laughs> Born in Sligo, she won her first competition, Sligo's Annual Music and Drama Singing Competition, at the age of just eight. She attended the Dominican Convent Sign Hill, Black Rock, just down the road from us. And she was selected with Kathleen Watkins and Deirdre Keller to participate in the school's 1951 Thomas More pageant. Although at the time she was primarily a singer, soprano, she was chosen to learn to play the harp to accompany herself. Mary made her first radio broadcast on Radio Erin before she left school at the age of just 16, bringing the harp to large audiences before the Irish traditional music revival had gathered true momentum here. This initial broadcast was to be followed by many other highly successful ones, <clears throat> although arguably the most prominent and indeed controversial one was when she appeared on the Ed Sullivan show in a not large green shamrock, and much to her distaste. Not least because of events such as this, Mary O'Hara found herself at the ghost gating of necessity, um, not just the musical landscape, but that of Irish cultural nationalism, epitomized, epitomized perhaps by Antosal campaigns, and Irish tourism, and this she managed to do with remarkable success. After establishing a successful touring and broadcasting career, in 1962 she decided to join the convent and became a Benedictine nun at Stanbrook Abbey in England, where she stayed for 12 years. Upon leaving the monastery in 1974 for the sake of her health, Mary O'Hara found that her musical reputation had grown during her time in the cloister, and she returned to performing and touring. Her career continued to grow, and in a matter of months, she became one of the biggest international recording stars to come out of Ireland. She has, <coughs> excuse me, she has released numerous recordings which have continued to be influential after her retirement. Her UK series for the BBC include the Starlight series in 1956, and Minstrel of the Dawn in 1985. Her two TV series for ITV entitled Mary O'Hara and Friends were broadcast in 1984 and 1985 in the UK. She also had her own TV specials and guested on all the major TV shows of the day, including, of course, The Late Late Show. Mary retired from recording and performing in 1994, 
and in 1996 moved to Kenya and then Tanzania. She returned to England in 2002 and subsequently went to live on the Aran Islands in Shmore. Although she had now retired from performing, she found herself in demand as a speaker with requests to give her Travels With My Harp talk at multimedia pre presentations in Ireland, England, Wales, Australia, the USA and Canada. During this period, she also published her <clears throat> excuse me, she also published her Harp accompaniments in five volumes, and in May 2012, her new autobiography was published. This was her fourth book. She has moved in exalted cultural and musical circles, mingling with friends such as Sean Ogotoma, Joan Baez, Val Dunican, and of course, Kathleen Watkins and Gay Byrne, to mention but a few. <clears throat> we here in UCD are happy to acknowledge Mary O'Hara's important contributions to the Irish musical and cultural spheres by conferring on her the um, excuse me by conferring on her the title of honorary doctorate. Pray honorabilis pro preces totaque universitas. Presento vobis hac meam filiam quam sio tam moribus quam doctrina habilem e idionum esse que admitur. Honoris causa ad gradum doctora tus in literis, it quae tibi fidime testor aspondato tatique academiae. Thank you. Ego doctoritate mihi concessa admito de ad gradium doctora tatus in uh, lit literis honoris causa. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such an honor for us to have Mary O'Hara with us this evening. One of the great pioneers of the Irish harp revival from the late 1950s. Her songs stand out for their vocal purity and emotional investment. She is a celebrated interpreter of the Our On More tradition, those great songs in Irish. Her work contributed to a huge awakening of interest in the Irish harp, which continues to this day. Mary's international reach was enormous. She was recorded by leading labels such as Decca Records and performed in the world's most prestigious concert venues. And here's something. Almost exactly 65 years ago, on St. Patrick's Day, 1957, Mary appeared on the iconic Ed Sullivan TV show in the United States. And she was in good company. Just two months before that, Elvis Presley appeared on the very same show. Two months before. And that was the famous one where he was shown from the waist up, by the way, just in case you're wondering. As well as her obvious impact on Irish music, Mary was a trailblazer, an important international role model for many women of the folk era who would follow her, including Joan Baez, who greatly admired her work. Mary O'Hara inspired many great harpists, one of whom is with us tonight. I am delighted to welcome on stage the wonderful Mary Kelly.
I am deeply honoured to have been invited to play for our distinguished guest, Dr. Mary O'Hara, and all the wonderful other distinguished um, doctorates this evening. And I warmly congratulate you all and Mary on, on this wonderful award. It's a real dream for me to be here tonight to perform for Mary O'Hara. And why I say that, um, believe it or believe it not, at the age of three, um, I remember hearing you perform Mary on the Lead Lead Show. And from that moment on, I knew that I wanted to be a harpist. I really wanted to sing with the harp.
very much, Mary Kelly. Thank you so much. What a beautiful tribute to Mary O'Hara.